the only time that Christians seem to get involved with biology is in this sorrowful debate called evolution versus creation. Or we fight about its successor movements, like intelligent design. But what if we got right into the heart of biology? And I want to make a claim in about two minutes and s to get your minds thinking, and we'll go from there. And the claim is that biology over the last couple of decades has changed radically from the sort of biology that really was opposed to a Christian worldview. You know, at the, the first decades after Darwin's work, a lot of Christians, and indeed a lot of evangelicals, were saying that this is compatible with the faith that we have. And then in about the 1930s, there was this new movement within biology called Neo-Darwinism. And it brought together a gene-centered approach with the core principles of Darwin. I do think that that particular approach to, bio to biology became one of the most virulent grounds for an anti-religious worldview. It became, in the middle of the 20th century, the opponent. And actually, I believe it did a fair amount of damage to the belief of ordinary Christians and Jews and Muslims, for that, for that matter. But something happened. Just as the uh, victory cries were being given, let's say about the time of Richard Dawkins' book, The Selfish Gene, which said it's all gene-level analysis, biologists, with no religious axe to grind, were, re were beginning to change the model. They were beginning to find out that it isn't just the genes that do the work, but each level of the emergence of new biological forms, new kinds of interactions, new kinds of causes, and new kinds of agents were out there actually doing the interacting. Now, Dawkins never said, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. It's not all about the selfish gene. In fact, during the 25-year anniversary, he repeated the same phrases over again. But the research in core biology was moving on. The same thing happened with the Human Genome Project. Here we are, finally we've mapped the entire human genome, the late 1990s. Ironically, however, about five years later, a new area of biology began to grow called systems biology. This is now the fastest growing and most highly funded area in core biological research. And systems biology has a completely different picture of how biology works. It sees each emergent level, each new level that gets organized, as having an influence on the levels be below it. Some biologists even use the, the term top-down causation. So that when you have an organism, it exercises an influence on its parts. We call this emergence, or emergence in biology, or emergent complexity. And this is such a radically different picture from what people have said before about biology. The really weird thing is that the people who use biology to attack religious belief or to attack Christianity don't give you emergent complexity. They don't talk about emergence. They talk about the selfish gene and a reductive model, which I'd like to say is at least 15 or 20 years out of date, and some people are going to say 40 or 50 years out of date to where cutting-edge biology is today. I think that if we follow this emergent picture, we get a radically different view of how the world works. We get a view where organisms have some influence on what happens in their parts, where a group of organisms has an influence on the individual members, where this now culture begins to emerge, so cultural practices have an influence on the evolution of the body. Just think of the way that um, more humans around the world can drink milk, which they couldn't before. Cultural practices and indeed religious practices have an effect on how biology works. And that means rather than having a fundamental battle between the two, we have a natural partnership between human beings with our thoughts, beliefs, emotions, including our religious beliefs and practices, and the biology that makes the whole thing run. Is that picture open to the influence of religion? Yeah. Is it open to the possible influence of God on the entire process? Yeah, it sure is. Why don't we hear about this then, when the biologists stand up to talk? Well, we do in a few, but generally we don't. And that is the picture that we now have to take as the core of our discussion with biologists in the future. For me as a Christian, this is good news. 
and it means that in the coming decades, we have a kind of interaction with biology that's going to look a lot different from what we're used to in the 20th century.